All right, today we're going to be trying to recover data off this totally dead A2179 MacBook Pro that Apple says is not possible. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see what we get on the uh, charger. Of course, as always, we have a USB-C amp meter here. This is going to tell us uh, what the board is taking as far as voltage and amperage goes. And on one port here, I have 5 volts and... 80 milliamps, so that is very low. Um, it is not really getting much um, into the power sequence at all. I do have a USB power delivery 2.0 fixed, 5 volts at 3 amps, so there is some communication going on with the CD3217s. That's a good sign, at least. Um, same thing on the other port, exact same reading. So at this point, if I had the exact same readings on two port, an issue with one of the USB-C controllers is less likely. And something further up, T2, PMIC, um, Something along those lines more likely. So let's go ahead and get the bottom case off and see what we're getting into. And just to touch on one thing before, um, if we have that PD 2.0 fix signal, that means that PP bus is present, PP 3v3, G3 hot, G3 hot RTC is present, and our CD 3217s are communicating with our T2 in some fashion. But let's go ahead and get the bottom off and see what we find. All right, overall this board is really clean actually. Um, just going over it really briefly, especially around the edges. Everything looks fine. Zoom out here a little bit. You know, usually we see obvious signs of corrosion, and there really isn't much here. I mean, it looks pretty darn good. Um, CD3217 area, we talked about this a little bit ago. Uh, we discussed that, you know, the fact that we're getting a PD 2.0 um, is indicative that um, these are communicating with each other. There's some discoloration on capacitors there, but nothing that I would really think would be an issue. But our PMU, this guy here powers our T2 chip. So our T2 chip is responsible for doing a lot of stuff and... If it's not getting the right power, then chances are it's not going to do its job properly. And this is the only remarkable area that we see here on this board that could possibly relate to our issue. Now, typically we see corrosion when, when there's a problem, and this doesn't look corroded. It just looks like there was liquid exposure on it. So my guess is there is just a couple solder balls or just some liquid under there um, that is just causing some crosstalk and causing us not to talk to our T2 properly, something along those lines. So I'm not even gonna replace this chip. I'm gonna put some good quality flux around it and give it a little reflow. Now this is one of the in instances where reflowing is okay when you suspect you have some corrosion under a chip. So that's what I'm gonna do. I just put some of our NC759 ASX flux um, down and we are just going to give this a little reflow to clear any corrosion that's underneath of it. So by doing so, this should, um, one, restore any solder joint that is corroded and not making good contact, and it will also dissolve and remove the corrosion or liquid that's under it that may be preventing it from turning on. So we're just going to heat... Give it a little nudge there. That should be good. Let's go ahead and let it cool down and let's see um, if it works now. All right, our board is sufficiently cooled down. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. So before we were getting five volts, 0 0.8. Um, and now, where is it here? 20 volts, look at that. Come on, flip the right direction. And uh, 20 volts at 2.4 amps. That looks like booting current. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this back in the enclosure and see if it actually boots into the operating system. But looks like that was it. Okay, we're back in the enclosure. And you can see here we have an Apple logo. It looks like it's booting into the operating system here, which is a very good thing. I'm going to put my hand right over here just to cover the uh, customer's profile picture and name. And let's just wait for it to boot up. There we go. It's going to boot right now. And there you go. This is a booted fixed MacBook. So thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you in some way.